The multiverse is a concept about which we know frighteningly little, but today we're going to explore it a little bit more. Hello and welcome back to Multiverse Monologues, the podcast show where we like to travel across the multiverses and visit the phantoms that we love. Today, we're doing something very special. We are traveling to a place we've never gone before. We're not only talking about a video game property, we're talking about an HBO property for the first time. I'm, of course, talking about The Last of Us, and me, Ethan Wensloff, will be joined by a man who has played the games. I have not played the games, but I have our video game expert here with me, Micah Hat. Micah, how are you? I'm doing great, and yes, I am the video game expert, I guess. Uh, I mean, so I played through the game. I played through uh, Last of Us 1, Last of Us 2, and then I um, let my aunt play through the game, and I watched her play through the whole thing. So I've experienced the Last of Us story twice. I'm very familiar. I played the uh, the Left Behind DLC uh, that shows more of Ellie's backstory, how she uh, got to be where she is. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to uh, to dive into the show. I can't wait for more episodes, and I can't wait to share this time with you, Ethan. Yes, yes. So without further ado, let's uh, let's go to this universe where Pedro Pascal is entrusted with taking care of a child. And no, it it is not Star Wars. It's The Last of Us. So let's grab our sling rings, hop in that TARDIS, and hit that hyperdrive. So we're going to The Last of Us universe. If you don't think there's hope for the world, why bother going on? You haven't seen the world, so you don't know. Keep going for family. I'm not family. No. Your cargo. Yes, The Last of Us. And before we dive into this episode, Micah kind of dived into it a little, but I want to like just talk about our personal history with The Last of Us and just say why we were personally excited for this show. And I'll start with that. So I've never played the games. I have heard about it. I've heard that the story is great. And I have I started to watch the cutscenes once upon a time, but then I didn't. I didn't finish. So I am very fresh to this world. I know very little about it. But the reason I was excited for this is because 2022, The Walking Dead ended. And that was a very sad time. But then there was hope. All The Walking Dead podcasts I listened to were slowly morphing into this Last of Us coverage. I'm like, what? what is this Last of Us? look into it more and the, and then the trailer drops to show starring Pedro Pascal about an apocalypse that that enough is a hook that'll get me in and I I am not a video game guy I very rarely play video games I once upon a time played Mario Kart way <laughs> back when but video games are just not my thing but what is my thing is television I love television so that's why I was so excited for this show but Micah you dove into it briefly in the intro but is there anything else you want to expand upon in yeah. this moment yeah i uh i first heard about uh the last of us it was probably like eighth grade when the game came out um and uh, i finally got it maybe my junior year of high school that's when i played it for the first time i bought a ps4 pro i got last of us played through that game uh i love it i love this game i love how grounded it is i love the character development i love the stories i love how everyone is so well written. So this, um, The Last of Us was a game produced by Naughty Dog, and their main focus is to kind of bridge the gap between movies and games. Um, if you've played uh, the Uncharted games, the Uncharted movie came out earlier last year. Uh, if you saw it, then you'll kind of get what I'm talking about here. Uncharted did for video games what uh, it needed to do for the action adventure genre. Uh, it took it in a direction that was all mocap. It had uh, a way better story. All the characters were, you cared about the characters. There's plot twists and turns, and, and it's the same thing for The Last of Us. They wanted The Last of Us game to feel like uh, a, uh, a Hollywood movie, like a real drama. And it's, it translates so well to the screen, and I can't wait to see which parts of the game they keep. Mm -hmm. how, do you know how many episodes there are? There are nine total. Nine total episodes. Yes. So that'll be what nine, like around twelve hours? Would you say of content here? Yeah, I don't know. And if the game all is about ten long. hours. Yeah. So we could have the whole game, um, right here. We could have some things changed, 
I know that from the promo material, which I love what they were showing us already with the promos, the the clickers and the the I forget what the other zombies' names are. Uh, they all look so real yeah. and so yeah. fungal, and that's one of the things that I love about The Last of Us is the design of the zombies. It's so different because it's based on fungus. Yeah. And uh, the intro for this show was really cool. They, they, it was uh, an interview from like the 60s. Yeah, 1968. Made. Yeah, 1968. And they're, they're talking about, okay, yeah, zombies, whatever. They, it could happen. Like this pandemic. W- is a pandemic something we should be scared about? And one guy's like, nah, no, nah, not really. And then the other guy says, well, if fungus were to adapt to... Evolve, yeah. Evolve to... Um, better combat temperatures because fungus can't thrive in a human unless it's below 95 degrees. So if it were to adapt, if the world were to warm up, then this fungus might be able to take over a human. And that's the basis of The Last of Us. It's very like rooted in, in what could be. There's this reality of, oh, what if fungus just all of a sudden decided to take over people? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have a mind. It just creates a a need for flesh or something and and i love the visuals that we see in this show i can't wait to talk about yeah, those yeah um i love um the the diversity of how many different zombies they are there are is uh, so in this world what are they their official name because uh, zombies i feel like they have different names yeah. they're not called zombies so there's clickers they click their tongues uh there's the big amalgamous ones or whatever they're big huge yeah. zombies yeah. that are a couple funguses have connected to create this mega one uh which we will see i saw that in the trailers they had it um, yes yeah yeah there's lots of really cool zombies in this in this show that we're that we're going to be seeing and the the cool thing about the the game is they use each of these zombies to showcase different gameplay elements. So there's some that you have to be stealthy around. There's some you have to be quick around. There's some you have to um, throw bottles to a different area so that you can Mm -hmm. completely avoid them because you cannot take these guys out. Um, Yeah, I I can't wait to see how they change that into, like, adapt it. Yeah, adapt it. So that's what I want to talk about that right now. But before we really start talking about this episode and how well they adapt it, I want to just set some ground rules for this podcast Mm -hmm. because clearly... This is a story that for a lot of people, like me included, first time ever witnessing this story. But for you, this is one of the many I feel like times. I have an upper hand. Like you, you guys have you have an upper comments. hand. You yes. guys have seen the shows and stuff for Daredevil, and you're going into the Spider-Man No Way Home, and you're like, oh, I know who Daredevil yeah. is, and I have yeah. no idea. <laughs> and for this, I feel like it's the first time I have some background yes. knowledge at all. So my question right now really is for discussion-wise, what do you think would be the best for this podcast, for the listeners of this podcast, and for me, as far as discussion goes, for spoilers of the greater story of The Last of Us. I think I'm going to avoid talking about Joel and Ellie's um, character development through the, the, like anything beyond what we've seen, Mm -hmm. but I will talk about the zombies and maybe the environments and cool things that we might see later. Yeah, and what what to expect maybe. Yeah, what to expect. So for example, we go across America in this show. Okay. We talk about it in this episode that um, we have to go find Tommy and Tommy's off in, what what was it, Oregon? Something like that. So we got to go out to Washington, I think is is where they end up in the games. Um, So yeah, it'll be cool to see where they take this. If what I'm, what I'm most excited to see is if they change the story at all, how will they change it, where will they go, and will they make the big story changes that will... Okay. Because people didn't like Last of Us Part 2 for the story. So I'm wondering if Season 2 is going to be the second game, but changed to maybe improve it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering if all it, if we should have a segment at the end of every podcast where we maybe do get a little more spoilery. If to there's where, anything to spoil yes, about. Yes, to where you can theorize on what you think will be coming up. Because okay. to really adapt this show, we want to talk about how uh, they adapted it from the game. So I want to I just ask you, how well did they adapt the start of the game to the start of this show? And how note for note is it? Yeah, so far, uh, well, in the game... You start as Joel's daughter, and uh, the cutscene at the beginning is, it starts from the birthday and giving the watch, 
Um, and then she goes to bed. So they watch the movie, go, you know, pick her up, put her in the bed, and then she wakes up at like 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. And there's planes flying. There's, and from there on, it's, it's pretty shot for shot. Okay. But we don't get any of that neighbor stuff in the game. And I think that's a really cool addition to see the change, the turn. We don't see any big turns in the game. Uh, we, there's a couple, uh, and I really can't wait to see those two. That those will be in future episodes. Um, but just starting it off strong with that old lady in the background when she's um, when the daughter is looking in the in the cabinet for a movie, and you just see the the old lady yes. just start to twitch. Yeah, and, and yeah, sit sit up in her seat like a like unsettling. The do. Yeah. It's, Oh, I was watching with my girlfriend Rebecca, and she was she was like, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah." To me, as a viewer right now, this I'm, is a scary show. I can't yeah, wait. I'm so intrigued because I'm like, "All right, what am I seeing for the first time?" Mm-hmm. And what have peop- has been a part of this story before? So mm-hmm. I want to talk about that. What what does this show have to do in order to justify existing? Because the whole the whole point of this oh let, let's bring last of us fans to this television show but you can't just retell the story note for note in this live action format because while that could be really cool i think maybe it could be predictable and maybe fans will get bored of that and it needs to justify transferring mediums cuz why can this now be a show like sure it brought new audience to the game like me who did not play the game i am now invested in this story but what can doing this allow it to do? I think the thing that it has to do is uh, similar to what they did with Lord of the Rings with the extended cuts. So this show should be an extended edition of the game. Uh, maybe some changes here and there to keep things interesting. But expanding on stories, expanding on... Um, like, for example, that, that intro, what I just said, with um, following the daughter a little more. We maybe have an hour in the game, or uh, 30 minutes with, with the daughter in yeah. the game. And this one, we have, what, 45 minutes? Yeah. Some, uh, just a little more, and we get, we, it changes everything. I was almost in tears, and I knew it was coming when, uh, when they go to shoot Joel and his daughter. So emotionally, would you say that plays better in yeah. the show? Yeah, yeah. And, and Pedro Pascal, he's doing a great yeah, job Yeah, he's so fantastic. Far. I yeah. love how, how committed he is to this, and... Um, the, the little things that they add to this, um, how he's throwing the bodies into the fire. Yeah. I can't remember if that was part of the game because I was so early on. Um, but he has this job, and then his partner in the job can't throw this kid in there. And he holds the kid just like how he held his daughter yeah. and then just dumps him, and you don't see anything in his face. Yeah. He's just like emotionless. But you know when he's thinking about his daughter because he's, he's in his head. He's like, no, I can't, I can't think about my daughter because I got this job to do. But when he's defending Ellie from that uh, Fedra agent, yeah, at the end, at the end, you see it in his face, and he's just pummeling this yes. guy in the, and even though like they were, they were, I wouldn't call them close, but they were partners. That Fedra agent and him, they were trying to, they were working to get. Yeah, you see him earlier yeah, in the he, episode. He sells him drugs so that he can get rations to buy parts for his car for the truck so the battery mainly yeah Yeah. the battery and um you you, you, the tension is so high in that scene you're like oh what's gonna happen here because that character isn't in the game the federal agent is not in the okay um i'll 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 point out which things are are part of the game and which aren't and uh, i think that that adds a little bit more to the world with that drug deal and with uh, they were trying to get the battery in the game. They were just do, using other methods. Uh, it's cool seeing the fireflies. So the fireflies are yes, this anti fedra um, kind of. They want to. They want to take back America and reestablish government that isn't. They they kind of want to connect the cities, the the DMZs or whatever they're called. Um, and we'll we'll see that throughout this throughout this story. I can't wait to. Yeah, and I'd love to compare the the game versus the show of this and compare it to the the Walking Dead show. Yeah, I'd like to hear that. And too. the Walking Dead comic because the Walking Dead show for the most part at the beginning they followed a lot of the beats of the comic, but they changed certain events in certain ways and they made certain characters die where they shouldn't have died. You know, they took narrative they made narrative decisions as a show to collectively come away from 
the comics. And I want to know, would that be a good idea to do some narratively different things with the show? Especially for, for uh, a part two, because um, the game, the yeah. Last of Us Part Two made some, some decisions that made a lot of fans angry mm-hmm. early on in the game and then told everything, told half the story through flashbacks. Mm. It worked for me. I loved the second game. Um, the first game people consider a masterpiece of video games. People call it tens out of tens. Yes, and, yeah. Um, to mess with that story, it's a very uh, unstable stack to 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 push over. And they have Neil Druckmann involved. He is the director of both The Last of Us games. He's like the Naughty Dog president. Um, so we'll see how yeah. they take it. Yeah. Uh, I would I, love. I think that they should change. They things. should. Yes. And then it'll keep fans on their toes. Yeah, because it does have to justify being a separate yeah. thing. And and the thing about Last of Us is that it is just slightly different concept from other uh, survival horror games and um, now zombie TV shows. Because we have tons of zombie TV shows, zombie movies. And what it has to do to stand out from the crowd is, all right, it already has people hooked in because it's The Last of Us. It was already a game, very successful game. How does it stand out as a show? Yes. Yeah. Because that was the thing with Uncharted. Uncharted, as a movie, doesn't really stand out. Did you see Uncharted? No, I didn't. But so, yeah. I do want to talk about this. Yeah, because... so Uncharted, it, it, they made the game as an Indiana Jones clone, like if Indiana Jones were a game. And they just did it. And then turning a movie out of an Indiana Jones clone, it's it was iffy. It was iffy. Uh, un- un- out. What's it called? Uncharted has a lot more comical things in it. Like at the end of the, the movie, they have these ancient pirate ships floating in the air by helicopters and okay. it's full of gold. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's just funny stuff. Uh, and that's what stands it out from Indiana Jones. But from The Last of Us, we'll have to see if it's enough to make it yes yes make it different from the walking dead make it different from so there's the fungus we have the more scientific backstory we have the fact that ellie has this bite and she yeah, hasn't you see turned that in this yet. episode yeah she hasn't turned yet nobody lasts because that than guy a day. the guy scans her and it comes up red yeah 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 and that's another cool part we see that one kid uh when we're first going to uh so we're in boston right yeah and uh where we open on the shot with this kid and he's he's like just stumbling into he's what, maybe eight, ten years old, stumbling into Boston, and he he falls over right in front of the the the, the gate. He's brought in. They test him. Uh, this woman's talking to him. He's like, hey, yeah, if we, we're going to give you some medicine, and then um, you after that, you can pick out all the toys you want. You can eat all the junk food you want, all that stuff, mm-hmm. but really, they're, they're putting him down because he was bit, or he yeah. was scraped, or yeah. he was, he's infected. So how do infections work in this world? In this world, infections work through bites, just like Walking Dead. Uh, I don't know of scrapes, um, but we also saw with that old lady, she got it airborne. Yeah. So in the game, there are, um, to make variable locations, there are, when when a walker or when a, a clicker dies, it starts decomposing or it starts... Um, we saw the one that was melted yes, to the on wall. The wall. Yeah. So it started growing onto the wall and that was quick. They said that wasn't there last time. The, if you caught that in the show, they said that wasn't there that last time. And when they start to turn like that and start becoming part of the environment, they go airborne. So spores start going in the air. They have to wear gas masks. Um, it was strange though, in the game, in the city, there are those areas where you have to wear the mask. So I wonder if they're not going to implement that because in that time in the game, you would have had to wear the mask what gas mask. So I, I don't know. I don't know. They, they might, yeah, they yeah. might get rid of that. So we'll yeah, we can, t- well, you t- talked about a little with the un- uncharted of it all, but this, this show really does break a mold because there is a stigma around video game adaptations where they don't critically do well at all. Mm-hmm. For example, we just had Halo last year. I did not watch that. You did not watch that. But mm-hmm. Ben watched it. And critically, that was reviewed horribly. So the fact that leading up to the release of this first episode, Ron Tomatoes was digging it. Early reviews mm-hmm. of uh, all my favorite 
people were saying it was fantastic. Uh, the IMDb score alone is over a 9.5. Yeah, critically, really good so far. Critically, it's succeeded and broke that mold. So that's Video just... game shows recently have been hit or miss, though. So we have Witcher Season 1. It's talked about a ton. People loved Witcher Season 1. So season, season 2 kind of fizzled out. We had uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, the anime on Netflix. People loved that show. I didn't watch it. It wasn't for me. Uh, but people loved that. It spiked the sales of Cyberpunk, the game, um, and kind of brought that game back. Uh, they were kind of thinking about canning it because they had all this DLC planned. And um, we'll see how this, this uh, kind of affects The Last of Us sales, too. People were kind of getting bummed on Last of Us because they just released a remake of Last of Us Part 1. So the first game, they re-released it on PS5. Okay. Uh, they redid all the visuals. It's a ground-up remaster. And it looks beautiful, but it was charged. It, people were... It, it was... They were selling it for $70. Okay. And that was the big thing. Yeah. Like, is Last of Us worth it? Should I hop on this hype train even more? And we'll see how this bumps up sales. Yeah, yeah. And is I'm that... I'm sure there's other shows and movies that I missed. Uncharted was great. I like that movie. Um... We got super, we got Mario Super Mario out. movie coming yeah, out. It's coming out. There's this year. lots of video game adaptations, and I heard the Mortal Kombat movie was okay a couple of years ago. I'm trying to think of anything else. Do you know any? I don't know. Uh, Last of Us has been great though. Yeah, yeah, this and show. I so to me like everything about the show it was so good, and yeah. it's hard for me to like say my thoughts on the show and say what I'm experiencing for the first time because I don't fans of The Last of Us probably experienced all this years ago when the game came out. But, man, this world is so cool. And oh, yeah. the characters are awesome. Like, Pedro Pascal is a lead. What, what is that character's name? Joel. Joel. So he is awesome. And I just want to ask you as a video game player, what, what do you think of the casting? Because to me, the casting is great yeah. off the chart. But you played the game, so I want to know how you feel about the casting of these characters. So Joel fits the visual and the voice very well. He fits the physique. He fits everything for... So Pedro is a really Pedro's good choice. Pedro's perfect, is what you're saying. Um, the choice for Ellie was a bit controversial. Yes. I, yes. She doesn't have the same kind of facial features, but I think I'm throwing that away. She is great. Yeah. I love yeah. how she captures the essence of how Ellie is in the game just perfectly. I don't know... I don't remember her name. Let me pull that up on IMDb. But she... She's so sassy and you know vulgar and all the all the things that make Ellie um, Bella Ramsey. That's her name. She in the games. She's very she's like teen angsty, kind of hard to work with, but still a lovable character. She's she's like you kind of feel for her because she has all these things thrown at her. She was born before or born after the infection started. So she doesn't know a normal world. I like how they, they add it. I think it was a line in the game, but uh, they say that she was, uh, what's her name? Tess. She was jumped by um, some teenagers, she said. And she dismisses them because they don't know what it was like in a normal world. They were, they, they were born in this quarantine zone. And just to think about that, that's like, how do you? I mean, we we went through a year and a half of COVID, yeah. something like that. So the quarantine. word quarantine hits a little different for yeah. us now. Yeah, and now we're now we're seeing it. We're like, could I have been born in a quarantine zone and still turned out the same way? No, I I probably would have had the same manners, the same. Sure, I could totally see a, a, a an uprising of just hoodlums. Yeah, because they didn't have any proper etiquette. Exactly. Yeah, and who cares about etiquette when it's the end of the world and all you care about is surviving? Yeah, it's it's so cool that so does the game also take place in 2023? I forget when it, I don't think so. I think it was I'll have to look this up. But is there that 20 year time jump? There Same is a 20 deal. year time jump because they have to have Ellie be like 15 ish. So she's born during the apocalypse, of course, yeah. and then you got a whole bunch of other characters. I I love that idea of being born in the apocalypse. That's what made uh, Judith in The Walking Dead pretty compelling because she was born in the apocalypse, but uh, they didn't really do much of that in The Walking Dead. I'd say, as far as the world building goes, I'm not trying to dish on The Walking Dead. I think that the first six seasons of that show are fantastic, but I think going right off the jump with this is such a good choice, and the world that's already established post-apocalypse and the systems and laws that they have in place, 
super compelling. And uh, I'm really interested to see where it goes. I think it was... Yeah, it was 2013. So the game came out in 2013. And it takes place... Uh, so that first area before the fall was 2013 uh, in the game. So they just set it back 10 years so that it's in line with 2023 as the present day and then 2013 as, or 20, 2003 as the, the past date. So day one, uh, Joel's 32nd birthday in the game was 2013. Okay, so they just... But yeah, they take place... Uh, that, that first scene was in Texas, so I don't think it was super clear, but they live in Austin. Yeah, they, the, tell, they tell you. They, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. I saw there were street signs and things, so in case you get, didn't catch it, uh, Joel is very much a Texas Ranger kind of guy. Um, very quick to pull the trigger on people if uh, if they cross him. I mean, we see he he was threatened with uh, losing another kid figure in his life, and he just beats the yes. the Federal yeah. agent to death. Yeah, so he's uh, got some PTSD. Yeah, 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 and that that's a theme that we'll continue to see throughout this is that he makes sacrifices for Ellie because Ellie is now. The uh, the kid figure. Yeah, yeah. So he's the he's, he's the protector of her now, and uh, I just wanted to. If is there anything else you want to say about this episode before we maybe dive into the future of this and maybe get into a little more spoilery stuff? Uh, well, we haven't seen any um, any of the different infected types yet. Uh, here I got a list of the the different ones. So there's the runners. That's the first stage. So the runners, they still look like people. Uh, they still have the faces, yes, like we normal saw. people faces. They have the little strings yeah. coming out. Yeah, yeah. They, that was gross. They're disgusting. Just seeing yeah. the, the fungus has taken over the whole body at that point. So the runners is all internal fungus. Then we have the stalkers. The stalkers are, uh, let me look that up real quick. I think they are, that's the second stage. It's two weeks to one year after uh, so that's they'll start getting little sprouts and and things. Uh, uh, so they have the vision and speed. So they're but they they're just as angry as the clickers, which is the next stage. The clickers use echolocation, so they have heightened sense of uh, sound and aware spatial awareness. So you have to be really quiet around them. That that's going to be really cool. We're going to see a lot of a lot of clickers. Clickers are the scariest ones. Um, that we'll run into. We have the Shamblers, Bloaters, and the Rat King. Rat King is like the, the big one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So with this 20-year time gap, it also gives us that opportunity to see things like Rat King, which takes probably the whole 20 years for him to develop. To and develop, okay. Just kind of get all gross. <laughs> yeah, so th that's one of the big uh, pluses of having this take 20 years later so with uh the, the walking dead the disconnect was with rick grimes in that first they don't evolve episode yeah well they don't evolve yeah and rick he kind of wakes up and then he's confused but all the other characters kind of know what's happening already mm -hmm. so doing this time jump having every character knowledgeable of these things and knowing what world this is and that this is just this is just life now I do love the fact that they have different evolutions and they are mm. different characters because that is something the walking dead did do that in the later seasons. They started giving the walking dead characteristics and whether or not they did anything with that. Uh, it's not up for debate. They didn't, they didn't do anything with sure. that. So I, I like just in world building ways to kind of keep things exciting. And Mike in HBO series wise, how many seasons do you think this show should run for or could run for did they say it was a limited yet they did, did not no i'm saying they're probably gonna have uh so season one is gonna be the first game i'm gonna guess they're gonna have uh, a mini series for season two or they could implement the left behind dlc into the first season so the left behind is um how ellie got bit um or scratched and how, how she got infected. We'll get. That's a really great story. I I can't wait to see how they adapt that into the show. Um, I'd say no more than four seasons. Yeah, four yeah. seasons would be stretching it. I'd say. Um, but also, they you could have, do three seasons, uh, two seasons minimum. Yeah, and they have directorial 
liberties to where they can change the story mm-hmm. any way they want. I don't think they'll go any further than Last of Us Part Two timeline wise, because mm-hmm. uh, timeline wise it jumps I think another ten years uh, from Last of Us Part One to Last of Us Part Two. Um, Ellie's an adult in that game, so yeah, I don't think that they're gonna they're gonna jump like that in this show. <laughs> yeah. So, is there anything that listeners need to know, or I need to know, going forward in this season? Anything I should be prepared for, or just uh, have an understanding of this universe? Like, for example, you mentioned the fireflies yeah. and who they were, and uh, one of the fireflies mentions that there is a war going on right now Mm -hmm. what would that war entail what is that war yeah there are uprisings going on all over the country because they're trying to connect um trying to connect trying to rebuild and the government wants them locked down like they said they they didn't have any authorized uh, we had the people that were being hung and they were being hung for leaving the quarantine zone unauthorized much like pedro is doing right yeah now. yeah so yeah. now he just left so he's on grounds for being hung that's what the federal agent said he's like hey, you guys are good to be you know you guys deserve to be hung at this point um and any other world things if you're scratched or bit you're gone that, that's it there there's no, no coming hope. back from there's that no coming back no there's, cutting off arms there's no cure there's no cutting off arms there's nothing like that so because you're once it's, yeah okay one, and that's what's so strange about ellie is that she's had it for a week yes. it's healed over already yeah and she makes her special. Gone. Yeah, she's makes special, her special cargo. So, what do you think we're going to be seeing in this show? Oh. So, she's special cargo. Uh, we have the fire. Uh, we have the fireflies. We have Tommy across the country. Uh, we've got Joel who uh, is looking after Ellie now. We have Tess. We have um, we have Nick Offerman's character that we don't know yes, about yet. Yeah. We have uh, a couple more people. Who? What do you think we're going to? So, be seeing? um, I I guess I didn't pick up quite on what are they doing with Ellie right now? I know yeah. they were... They haven't revealed it yet. They haven't revealed it. So okay, I don't want to so say he, exactly what He just has doing. to take her somewhere? Yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm curious... They're basically to, like, get Ellie out of the city. Get out of get her out of Boston because she's better off there than if she were found, she would be shot because she is infected. Okay. So I'm curious infected. to see what they do with that storyline. Yeah. Obviously, uh, Joel has already attached himself to her. And it kind of sees his daughter in Ellie a little bit. So that relationship, I'm excited to see that blossom and see Joel just become the more father figure and see Ellie develop more characteristics. That's one of the and, highlights of the game. Yeah, so I'm really seeing that relationship, see, yeah. I'm excited for that. And uh, does Joel tend to be unhinged? Is that a characteristic he has in the game? Because they are establishing that pretty early in the show, that he's a pretty unhinged guy. I'd say... He's quick to anger when it comes to uh, a threat to Ellie. Okay, okay. Yeah, if there's a threat to her, he will go all out and and destroy things. But uh, he's slow and very um, uh, cautious when it comes to anything else. So he's he he likes to take his time. He likes to uh, plan things out and make sure that things are going the way. From what I I guess that's uh, kind of what I would how I picture Joel is yeah. that he he doesn't just jump in guns blazing. He will kill who he needs to kill to make sure Ellie's alive and yeah. uh, get her to where she needs to be, which will be revealed yeah. soon. Yeah, and I'm all for that. So, yeah, I, I don't really have any expectations. That's what's so great about how blind I am yeah. to this game and this world. I don't know what to expect, but I know I'm super excited for it because just an apocalyptic setting is fantastic. And the visuals we see in this episode are great of just the world. Oh, how Boston looks. Moss, with that tower that Moss over. over. Yeah, and the towers and the buildings. Just That's all the destruction. That's highlight of the games is just the visuals and yeah. they're nailing it. It's awesome. So like you said, they're going to look for, is it Pedro's brother? Yeah, Pedro's brother so is... So Joel's brother. Yeah, yeah, Joel's brother is Tommy. Tommy. Yeah. Tommy's so, a big part of the games. So yeah. yeah, you have him radio. Tommy him. is the connection out out west, so they'll probably be going to Tommy next. Well, yeah, that's what yeah. they're hoping that's, to do. That's where at least Joel wants to go. Yeah, where they might end up, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, maybe you that, do know. You definitely do know. Yeah, because there might be things <laughs> along the way that they got to stop at. He he was pointing on his map different cities, so there was Chicago that he pointed at. I knew that. Um, so other things like that. He's got to cross the mountains. Um, yeah, but no, right but now, Joel just wants to see Tommy. He needs to make sure his brother's alive because it's been a couple weeks since he's heard from him. Yes, yeah. I think he said like uh, 10 days. Usually responds within the day. Yeah, so I'm excited. to. You said that they trek across America mm-hmm. in this game, so yeah. I'm excited to see the different 
uh, landfield and uh, just uh, scenery that we're going to get to see just different cities and meet more characters mm. and ultimately see these creatures in action because we got to see a little in this episode, but there wasn't really a uh, a herd, I guess. Mm. And how how what how many of these creatures are around? In like, the games, there aren't. Uh, so in Walking Dead, I've seen a little bit of Walking Dead. There are you'll just see open fields herds full of, of them. Zombies, yeah. yeah, I don't think that there are because in the in the game you can't fight a whole herd. You can run from them. I don't think that there's really ever a time where there's a herd um, in the game. It's more of a stealth game than uh, an action guns blazing, you know, get out your huge guns and just boom. Um, so I'd say there's there's enough to be enough to be looking over your shoulder, but not enough where you'd hear them all the time. Okay. So like for example, The Walking Dead, the zombies would show up. Yeah. Early early seasons, they were they were scary, they were enticing. Yeah. They could kill our characters. But then later they just became dull. They're uh-huh. kind of like uh, screen fodder, just something to for our characters to kill. Yeah. Would you say that these creatures, these fung, fungi, they're when they're on screen, are they to be feared every time? Oh yeah, to yes. be feared because the the clickers they will run and they will they're they click and it, yeah. so they they make this clicking noise and it's very th- it it just gets at you because the zombies in Walking Dead they're just like yeah whatever they're just so slowly walking slowly, about yeah. you know they're all broken. But the fungus, they said it in the interview, it keeps them alive. And it wants to keep that shell so that they can just move them places. And that's what's different about the zombies in Walking Dead is that they corrode over time. Yeah. So, yeah. I I like how they, they have these stages. There's more than just walkers. And uh, the I forget what the... We'll we'll see. We'll see how they uh, how they change the the. They might add new types. They might add uh, different abilities. They might show off some new stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I remember I was I was scared the whole time. Pretty and much. And I know a big thing with The Walking Dead is the the I'm zombies. Over my shoulder. The, yeah, the zombies weren't the biggest threat most of the time, and they even oh, hint at it in this episode. How sure the clickers are scary, but the other people out there. Mm-hmm. can also be terrifying. So is that something that the game plays into too? Is that, that that people are the real monsters? I definitely don't remember that in the okay. game as much. Um, the the scariest thing were definitely the, the infected. Yeah. And they have, I forgot, they have these fungal things. So they have spores. They have um, different environmental things. So you'll know when there's some around. Uh, if you go into a hospital or something and you go into the basement, it's all dark. There's the spores in the air. You got to put on the mask and then you got to, you, you got to watch out because they could pop out. Cause there, we saw there was the one on the wall. They could be dead. They could be alive. That's another thing. There's a lot of unnerve, a lot of uneasiness yeah, and uncertainty about what is, what could be a threat and what couldn't be a threat. Yeah. So you sometimes don't know. Can, yeah. yeah. can, a uh, clicker appear human and then just reveal itself to be a clicker. Like, is there no, like- no? You'll see the little, the little. I don't know what they call. It. That's new. The little things coming out of their mouths. Yeah, that wasn't in the tentacle the, things. Yeah, the little tentacle things. Yeah, I love that part in the show when the old lady. Yeah, the reveal. So she, uh, the daughter, walks into the kitchen. She slips a little bit on the blood, and she's just horrified. She looks up. She sees that the grandpa figure, and she, he's like terrified he has this bite taken out of his neck and he's looking over to the left at the at his wife <laughs> who is who was wheelchair bound before yeah. but is now very mobile so you can see what the fungus does to someone who's crippled like that and how it can really change somebody uh it we just saw takes over the body yeah it takes yeah. over but it doesn't completely heal them we saw that <laughs> Grandma broke her hip on the way out and <laughs> tripped over. Yeah. I love the energy that these walkers have. It's more World War Z. Yeah. Than, they're uh, so fast. Yeah, they're so fast. That one in Austin downtown when he was running through the kitchen, he was booking it. And he was throwing himself into the shelves. I, I, I would like to see a behind the scenes with that. He was like, so how, how energetic are these, are these zombies? <laughs> Give it all you got, man. Okay, I'll be... Let me, <laughs> let me get my running shoes on. Like... 
Whew, the, these guys are threat. Yes. I, yeah. If I didn't know um, how that scene turned out, I would have thought Joel and Ellie or um, Joel and his daughter would have gotten uh, knocked over yeah. in that kitchen. Yeah, they would have died. Yeah. Well, not died, but definitely would have been overtaken. I would have thought that the daughter would have been lost there and not later. Yeah. So yeah, that, we, we also see that the FEDRA agents are very quick to uh, kill people. To shoot people, yeah. yeah. Especially early on, we saw that uh, Joel's daughter was not infected. She was scraped a little. She uh, broke her ankle. That's what it was. It was. There was the car accident. I love that visual of the plane falling out of the sky. All those planes slowly uh, going down in emergency landings. And then that one plane just falls onto the street. Yeah. And yeah. explodes, and then that sends that tire flying and into their truck. Yeah, awesome visuals. I love that. And that's when Joel's daughter breaks her ankle. Yeah, Sarah. Sarah, yeah. that's her name. Okay. And then Sarah is shot by the Federal agent for being injured. Which I'm. I, I love that yeah, transaction yeah. in between the agent or er, and the um, just the commanding people. He's like, "I've got two here. One is injured. Oh, uh, uh, d- repeat, sir." Did I get that right? Kind of thing. Yeah. And he, he lifts up his gun slowly. Yeah. He's like, sir, you don't have to do this. Sir, please don't. And then he shoots. He just opened fires on, on Joel and Sarah. Yeah. So I figured Sarah would die because she, I, I didn't see her any of the promotional material. Mm. I only saw uh, Ellie's character. That's so a like, big part of Joel's motivation. Yeah, I'm like, okay, Sarah, Sarah's got to die. But that is not the scene I expected her to die in. I know, right? Yeah. Cool. It's a rough scene in the in the game. It definitely made me cry. I almost teared up here today. <laughs> I but, yeah, I got emotional. Yeah, yeah. Was, they did it really well. But I want to ask you, what was the scene in this episode that sold you on it as a TV episode? Oh, the first half hour. First half hour. The first half hour. I'm I'm in. Yeah, I am fully in. This is going to work as a show for sure. Was there anything that didn't work for you? Uh. The stuff in Boston in the game is slow, and it's slow here. Yeah, uh, they cut out a lot too, but it it's tutorial stuff. They they teach you how to shoot, teach you how to hide, teach you how to sneak. Um, there's they they cut out most of that. There's some gang activity in Boston that they cut out, which I think could have helped to change this some more. Um, and there are clickers and runners and stalkers underneath Boston that they didn't talk about at all. Um, but besides that, I mean, it, they're doing a stellar job. This yeah, is, it's a great episode. Yeah, and nothing was really boring. No. They yeah. cut out the boring stuff from the game so far. And when you have Pedro as the lead and, yeah, the actress they cast as Ellie, also great. They both they command the screen and you just want to watch them. And Pedro's just one of those guys where you know that over there on Mandalorian, they're just like, man, what, what are we doing? Why are we covering this guy's face? This guy's got range. He can do so yeah. much. And so that that's funny with Mandalorian, the, the conf, confliction they have over there because you do have this amazing actor who's in his mask. Mm-hmm. But here he gets to just go hammo and just be this role. So is is there anything else that you want to say before we wrap this up, Micah? Um, Marlene. Uh, the leader of the Fireflies in Boston. She plays Marlene in the game. I think that's... So the same uh, voice actress? I, yeah, I think that's the same... One, I, I think it's the only actress that makes it into the, into the show. Uh, I'd like to see if they get... What's his name? From the game. Let me look up his name. Because uh, he usually cameos in... Let me see here. His name is Troy Baker. I hope that we see Troy Baker at some point in the show um as well as uh what's her name ashley johnson so that's joel and ellie i hope that we see them so those are the voice act actors for the voice actors for the and mocap actors too so is there any frustration as a fan of the game that they didn't just use the same no no No. i think that they don't they don't look anything like the characters they couldn't sell it no same, no. same deal with uh, Rosario Dawson as Ahsoka. Mm. They didn't just cash. wouldn't. It yeah. wouldn't work because their faces are too different. They're not the same builds or anything. Pedro Pascal fits it perfectly. Uh, what's her name? Bella Ramsey. She's close enough. She gets the the voice and the mannerisms down. Though. She's close enough to where you can you can yeah. buy into it. Yeah, yeah, I can buy into it. I can totally buy that she's Ellie, 
and that's great for me. Yeah, but, uh, no, but I'm I'm excited for next week. And so does this show it it drops nationwide the same time on HBO Max? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, I yeah. I love that doing that on a Sunday night. This Instead is of two a.m. on a Wednesday. Is, yeah, I don't know what Disney Plus is doing. The two a.m. stuff sucks. No one wants to stay up till it's two a.m. It's midnight West Coast, but yeah, it's two a.m. three a.m. East Coast. Yeah, just Disney Plus. Do it at a time where. We, people could watch it that same night. Like, yeah. that's just how you unite a fandom right there. Because then that's make it. I, I skipped out on some episodes. I fell behind because it wasn't at a good time to drop. Yeah. yeah. If it were Wednesday evening or, or uh, Tuesday evening, I would be able to watch it. But Wednesday morning at 2 a.m., that. Yeah. Ridiculous. I don't know. We'll see if uh, HBO's servers can handle it. Yeah, we'll <laughs> that see. That may be a reason why they... Because even Disney Plus has difficulty. With Mando Season 2, Episode 1, when that dropped, when the uh, Loki episodes were dropping, WandaVision episodes, Disney Plus crashed. I, I think HBO knows how to handle that, though, yeah. because they, they had the mega-hit Game of Thrones. They're a much and, more premium series, yeah, uh, yeah. service. Too. They've been doing quality stuff for forever. But, yeah, is there anything else that you want to highlight before we wrap up and roll into episode two next week, I think um, I think my my main prediction is uh, the Left Behind show is going to be uh, just put into flashbacks. I think we, if anything, we'll get a full episode where it's mostly Left Behind. And Left Behind is a story of yep. Ellie before. Yes, I we think meet it's her. called Left Behind. I, I, I hope I'm saying that right. I know Left Behind's a book series, and well, that's not. <laughs> Yeah, so those, to those of you who are tuning in for this episode, we, we do weekly podcasts. We're doing our Marvel. Yeah, Left Behind. Yeah, Left Behind. Okay, sweet. We're doing our Marvel movie marathon. Uh, we just had our Hulk episode drop, and later this week we're going to be having our Punisher Warzone podcast dropping. So make sure to check those out. We are watching every theatrically released Marvel movie. And, uh, yeah, we're... We're going to try to do every episode of The Last of Us, and I think we're off to a fantastic start with this episode. Real quick, what are some zombie things, some cliches that you don't want to see? In this? That I don't want to see in this. Some things that you didn't like about Walking Dead. Yeah, just how, this, how boring they became, yeah. the zombies, and how predictable the show became. Nothing really about the, the zombies, I think were compelling after the first few seasons. Mm-hmm. So I'd love to just to see them keep this exciting. And I'd like to not every time we meet a new character in the last of us to them, them to immediately die. I'd like to spend time with them maybe and build them as characters instead of just having them as zombie fodder. To yeah. eat. What I like about the last of us is it's not a huge party of characters. Like in the walking dead, there were just too many people. Yeah. Massive like cast. 20 or 25 people. I don't even know. Uh, but in this, it's two, three, four people max at a time. Yeah, Joel, Ellie, we have Tess. We have um, like Nick Offerman's character later. We have all these other people. But it, you know, less than five people at a time that are traveling in this party. And um, that'll really help with character development. Yeah. That'll really help. Yeah, getting to spend time with the characters mm-hmm. and... Really being more personal, because yeah. I feel what you're saying about the walking It'll dead. It'll keep were... the, the zombies a threat for longer because yeah. they only have each other. And if yeah. one goes down, then it's you got to... Yeah, it's huge. That's yeah. half of the party. Yeah. So you got you to gotta make sure that's... <laughs> yeah. It, the, the stakes are a lot higher. It's like the, uh, the walking dead, the missions where they would go out to get supplies and there'd be two or three of them. It's that, but the whole show. Yes. Yeah. And those are my favorite episodes of Walking Dead. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm excited for the rest of the show, and uh, this has been our coverage on the first episode of The Last of Us. We're very excited to do this, and we don't really do a lot of episode coverage, but we felt that this show was big enough and grand enough to to justify doing this. This is going to be something. Yes. This is, this is going to be a special show. Yes. And HBO I've, has done it with Chernobyl uh, also. Yeah. I haven't seen that. Have you seen Chernobyl? No, but sa- same guy. Same kind of same feel for it, and I'm I'm... I know that uh, I haven't seen Chernobyl, but I hear it's really captures the environment and it's a similar kind of feel for this show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that intro, like the, the actual last of us uh, logo stuff where we see all the fungus growing. Oh yeah. What do you think of that? That I I like that a lot. Yeah. 
That was the, really I, quick. I liked everything about everything this episode. Everything about this episode has been really I good. loved it. Yeah, it was a great episode of television. I think all the raving about it is justified. Mm. And I'm I'm so excited for more. And I'm just <laughs> Wish we had more to talk about. I'm I'm like I know, ready to I know. ready to see yeah. episode two. <laughs> I know. You you have so much knowledge in your yeah, head that I, you can talk about. I can't wait about. to talk about the stuff that's coming up. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll see you back here next week. Uh, I'm Ethan Wenslaw. I'm Mike Ahead. We hope you have a fantastic day. And we'll see you in another multiverse.